Hi everyone, today is Monday, February 5th, 2018. My name is Brian McInerney. I'm the hydrologist here at the National Weather Service. This is the short version of the hydrologic briefing for Utah. So let's take a look at our general weather pattern. What we're looking at here is a rendition of the winds at about 18 to 22,000 feet. This is February 2nd, I took this. And if you see the yellow dot, that's Salt Lake City. The coast is that little line that goes down to Baja and you can see the winds and the jet stream north of us. This has been the general pattern since November. Most of the energy is north of us. It swoops down in the Midwest, goes up on the East Coast. They've been very cold, very wet, and it has that sine wave look to it. Also notice that we're still getting a little bit of energy going past us. Some of the northern basins are doing much better than the southern basins, and that's due to the elimination of some of the inversion of the poor air quality. Our air quality hasn't been really that bad recently and it's due to this feature here. So when we take a look at the precip anomaly, what we see for January are lots of reds and that indicates below average precip for the month of January. You see some green out in the desert but really they don't expect much of anything out there. The whole picture should show us that we've got an absence of precip up to uh, less than, you know, somewhere around 30 to 50% in southern Utah, and things are pretty grim. Where it counts up in the mountains where it's going to run off and give us spring snowmelt runoff, we see a lot of 50 to 70%, with some areas 70, 90%. Um, Colorado's not doing much better, Arizona's doing much worse. When we look at uh, October through January, on average for precip, this is what we see, and there's parts of Utah that have received less than 30% precip. Um, it's a pretty grim picture where it counts in the mountains, still about the same. But if you look down in Arizona, they've had less than 30%, and that's due to that high pressure ridge shunting all the weather north. The farther north you go, the better the conditions are. They're still not great. The farther south you go, it looks pretty awful. Temperature anomalies. This is the Salt Lake uh, Airport for February. The y-axis is our degrees above average for that day. Time is on the x-axis. When you average all this together, we were 9.5 degrees above average. We just continue to break heat records, and this was the second warmest uh, February we've ever had going back to 1874. If you look at it graphically for January, this is what we saw in the western U.S., pretty warm. The eastern part of the U.S., pretty cool. This is what we see. And then when you look into February, oh, February 1st through the 4th, this is what we've seen. You know, areas 13 to 16 degrees above average by the UN is most of the state is in that 10 to 13 degree range. When you look at snowpack, and this is the end of January, and we look at February, beginning of February, these are the percent of averages for the basins. And if you see the bear and the upper green are doing much better, then as you slide south, that high pressure really didn't allow any of those brush by storms. 50 to 60 percent in Weber, Six Creeks, Utah Lake, and the Duchesne. And then if you go farther south, um, the Severe and the Central Utah and the Virgin, right around 40 to 45. 63 percent for Lake Powell, but that also includes parts of the higher elevations in Colorado. And when you look at the whole water supply, and it's the, the end of January, but we'll look for February 1st. This is what you see, and this is the amount of water we're anticipating or, or forecasting coming out of the mountains from April 1st through the end of July in percent. And you see the bare and the upper green, not too bad, but then as you start sliding farther south, less than half over the central parts of the state and the southern parts of the state. Uh, Lake Powell gets a little bump. Not much, but it's due to uh, the fact that uh, they have inflow from Colorado itself. So overall, a pretty grim picture for water supply. One thing to consider is our, as our reservoirs are in great shape from runoff from last year, and that's quite helpful. So there you have it. That's the short version. Kind of quick look at temperature precip, snowpack, and, um, and water supply forecast. There's my contact info. If I can do anything for you, let me know. Hopefully we'll get some snow and more storminess, but really it doesn't look too good out to mid-February. We'll go from there. Thank you again.